For this is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to another segment of Straight Talk, where I am your hostess for the next 30 minutes, Prophetess Patricia Williams. And I call it Straight Talk because God reveals exactly what He wants us to hear in this season and in this hour. So I want you to get your Bible and we're going to do some intense study. But first of all, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Spirit of the living God, I thank you. Thank you that, Lord, we have gathered together to study your word. God, I decrease in order that you may increase within me. I come against every hindering spirit right now. I command Satan to lose his hold. I command him to flee back to the pit of hell from whence it came. And Father, I just thank you and give you the glory. God, in the name of Jesus, set the captive free on today. Give us a word of hope, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I am so elated that you are here. I call this straight talk because I sit around my table and I like to communicate and just share the goodness of Jesus and all that he is doing not only for me but for everyone that I know and especially you because everybody has a testimony just waking up this morning and just being able to lie down at night that is a testimony all by itself because I can truly say he allowed the death angel to behave while we slept on last night. 2016 is the year of recovery and I have been talking about how we can set ourselves up to be blessed because that is a powerful word and God had gave it to us at the very beginning of the show that 2016 is the year of recovery and he gave us a strategic plan on how to walk in it and how to keep our mind focused on the things that he has set before us prayer watch our communication watch our association have a fasting life and have an attitude of praise no matter what it looks like so today i'm going to be talking about wiping the sands of egypt from your feet Remember, we are still in the season of recovery. That means nothing missing, nothing lacking. And that also means that God is getting ready to restore everything that the canker worm has eaten and what the enemy has stolen. So we're going to go to Deuteronomy 11, chapter 10 through the 12th verse. And it reads as follows. For the land whither thou goest in to possess... It is not as the land of Egypt from which ye came out, where thou sowest thy seed and waterest it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. But the land whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it. From the beginning of the year, even until the end of the year. That's a confirmation all by itself. God wants us to get this thing at the beginning of the year so we will not be distracted going all the way to the end of the year. Wiping the sands of Egypt from your feet, meaning you can't go back to where God has delivered you from. Sure, there is temptation to try to pull you back to where God has delivered you from. But there is a strategic plan. And I always use strategic plan because I am a businesswoman as well. And just like in the natural realm, in the worldly version of it, there is a plan to build a business there is a plan that we set each and every day on how we must conduct ourselves there are the world are filled with plans but god has a spiritual plan for our lives god has a spiritual plan so that we can 
not be tricked by the enemy to give up on the word that God has planted within our spirit and also the word that has been spoken over our lives. Sometimes, many times I had asked God, because when God had gave me this topic, I said, God, why do people always go back into situation and habits once they are delivered? And then God told me, he said, you can be saved, but not delivered. There is a difference. Because yes, you can confess with your heart and you can believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. You're saved. But it's a process after salvation that you must get delivered. Yes, but I truly mean what I say. That I am saved. But the process, and many of you are going through this now, of being delivered is a hard thing for you. Be because you don't want to give up your habits. You don't want to give up that man or that woman. You don't want to give up the clubbing because I I have not seen so many people that is trying to work the system both ways. You can't serve God and the devil at the same time. You cannot be a new creature in Christ Jesus and you still cussing. You cannot be a new creature in Christ Jesus and you still going out to clubs. Shaking your booty and everything else. You cannot be a new creature in Christ Jesus and have the same old mindset. Where you take off the old man. God is putting on a new man. But for some of y'all. And, and then I can feel your spirits. Some of you really want to do what Christ has called you to do. Because you can still feel a pulling. A pulling in your spirit to do the things that you used to do. Some of you have the residue of Egypt still attached to you spiritually. And it can be the mindset. It can be the company you keep. Because if you have a mindset to live like a king or to live like a queen, to be the daughter of God, you cannot connect with the unbeliever. Believer and unbelievers does, do not have anything in common. You cannot connect to a person who is not willing to walk out on faith. And you have the utmost faith to do whatever God told you to do. You still have the stench and the smell of Egypt that is upon you. I can testify because when I was saved, that's what I thought that that's what it is. Just get saved and that's it. Repent if I did anything because I could testify about me because I used to smoke faithful in the ministry, sing in the choir because I love to sing. And once the preacher get up to start preaching, I got my little finger tipping on out to go get me a smoke and to come back in the choir. And when that Sunday service, because I was thinking Sundays just belong to God. Saturday, Monday through Saturdays was my time. And Sundays was God's time. I partied, I drank, I gambled, I did anything. I smoked my weed and everything else. But when you get totally delivered, I had to learn. Yes, I was saved. But the deliverance part, that's the part you, you don't want to give up. I don't care what nobody said. When you was a sinner, the things of the world felt good to do. When you was a sinner... You felt like everything just fell in your hands. You, you didn't have to worry about nothing. You didn't have to, to ask anybody for anything. You got what you needed on your own. But there is a switch. Because if you are living the life Christ has ordained for you to live, you got to go through the process of deliverance. And it don't take God all day long to 
to deliver anybody. It is according to your heart. You saying it's it hurts me. I can't do it. I can't do it. Take that word out of your vocabulary. Take cannot out of your vocabulary. Because the word of the Lord say I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. No, you can't do it. Not in your flesh. You can't. But Christ can do it. Why? Because Christ is living within me and it will give me the strength I need to get delivered. Hallelujah. That's why it's so easy to revert back. And I'm here to tell you, this is our season of recovery. Don't be scared to be blessed in this hour. Yes, you stood. You deserve it. I used to have that intimidation or that fear of getting blessed because I felt like I wasn't worthy of the blessings of God. Or somebody may say something because I got blessed. God say, mm -mm, come up out of that. You deserve it. You was faithful. You were just. You stood for righteousness. You stood for holiness. People of God, in this day and hour, it is either holiness or hell. And some of you, my sick under the deal of shy, God is going to put a word in your mouth of holiness. You is going to reject. You are going to be rejected. You are going to be talked about and lied on because you stood. But there is a word that is going across the land. You must live holy in this hour. And holiness is not about what you wear. It is your lifestyle. Yeah, we can pretend on Sunday. But what are you really like when you, when you get home? How come your children cannot respect you when you get home? What is your mm, motive? How do you act? How do you present yourselves among the sinners? Especially among your family members. And let me put this out. Once you make up your mind. For God I live and for God I die. Your number one enemy is going to be your family. Why? Because you are a changed person. You don't go out and party like you used to do. You're not the head. You are not the highlight of the party anymore. You don't smoke and drink and curse and have barbecues or go to family reunions anymore like you used to. Because they don't see what God has done for you. Mm. Through you. How God has lifted you out of the Mari clay. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, some of you are even on the urge or the verge of compromising just to keep peace in your family. But God say, don't do it. Stand firm. And whatsoever he gives you to say, say it. Because he has your back. And getting back to the little story of Deuteronomy 11, 10, and 12. There is a land that we all have to go and possess. God equipped us in 2015 because... Some of y'all was knocked down, hard-hearted, on the verge of giving up, spiritually beat down, spiritually raped. Oh my God, manipulated by some that thought they could use you and abuse you. Some of you was even church hurt. Mm. And this happened all in 2015. But see, you have to go through a process in order to recover everything you needed in 2016. And can I share this with you? Everyone didn't make it over. And I didn't mean by physically death, spiritually death. Their spirits could not take what the enemy was trying to do, the, do to them and through other people to harm you. Because you rather gave up than to see God and love God. But some of you, 
knew God was in the midst of it and God had a plan. That's why you stood. But guess what? This is your land. 2016, God said you finna recover everything what the devil has stolen. So God commanded Moses to deliver the Israelites. And some of us had mentors and leaders that knew exactly what God was doing and what God planned was for our lives. And they was commanded to deliver us out of what we was in. They had the tools, they had the word in their mouths to speak to our situation. But sometimes we get so emotionally and spiritually overloaded and burn it down until we don't want to hear nothing from nobody not even God oh my God thank you Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost say some of y'all was in a seclusion where the enemy wanted you so he can feed your mind with negativity to make you give up and it's a sad thing some of you gave up but some of you mm, Knew God was there with you. But I hear the Lord saying right now. That he's here again. Hallelujah. All is not lost. Repent and do your first works over again. Mm. Some of you did not even have mentors or leaders or anybody. Prayer partners that could help you or that could see what was going on. Because let me tell you one thing. When you are going through spiritual warfare, you cannot see in the spirit realm. It's like everything is blinded. But look here. You feel it in the natural. That's why it's good. To have intercessory prayer with someone who can see for you. To have a prayer partner. Because what you can't see, they can see. I remember I was going through real heavy last year. Because it felt like, I say, God, this is the same trial I'm going through over and over again. And you said that it was coming and it looks like. I get excited and nothing happens and it push me back again. So the woman of God, my mentor, my spiritual mother told me how the enemy was fighting me in the spirit and had his generals to try to knock me down. But there was something within me that knew that I was not going to let go of God's hand. And there was a song. And it's also, it's good to have a song. And nobody did not know I had this song in my spirit ringing. Give me you. Lord, everything else can wait. Give me you. Lord, I hope it's not too late. And it's that verse. God, it's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees. I'm crying out to you. See, I couldn't sing it. Because my mind was so clouded. The devil was trying to beat me down. But my spirit man was singing singing it. That's what kept me alive in, in the spirit realm. That's what kept my mind. When you feed your spirit with the things of God. And when you feed your spirit with the word of God. And especially be filled with the Holy Ghost. It is going to bring it is going to bring things back to your remembrance. That's why I preach and I teach. You got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You cannot preach without the Holy Ghost. You cannot sing without the Holy Ghost. You cannot even minister to God's people or do anything without the Holy Ghost. And it's a sad thing. People in this day and hour has put the Holy Ghost back on the back burner. The Holy Ghost would keep you. The Holy Ghost is also a checker. Okay. I'm not supposed to wear this because this is too tight. Or this is too short. The Holy Ghost will convict you to go and change your clothes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even how to present yourselves. Not only in a fashionable way. 
but in a manable way towards others. Many people is not willing to accept the gift of the Holy Ghost and that's why right, it's a gift because it's no longer you. <laughs> you do not declare independence anymore when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost overshadows you. It tells you what to do. Hallelujah. God commanded Moses to deliver the Israelites from Egypt. An 11 day journey took 40 years because of unbelief. And they would not allow God to bring them into their destiny. Aren't you tired? These Israelites here, 11 day journey took 40 years. I don't know about you, but the Lord told me that in this year, going back 15 years, he spent to recover everything. Going back 15 years. And that's what I hear the Spirit of the Lord say. God is getting ready to restore some of you way back until 20 years ago for the things that you have really not say that you didn't believe God, but things that came in. Situation has had arose. People was acting crazy. You was unstable. And you know, that's all right to uh, tell God. God, I believe, but help my unbelief. God, sometimes I get unstable in my walk, but that's why I'm depending on you. Ask God, how can you get stable? How can I get my belief? Everybody's different. In order for me to keep my belief, and in order for me to know that God's going to do it, I think on the things that he has already done for me, and how he brought me out, and how he has healed my body. And I even go to the word. Because that's one thing. You can speak the word over your situation. And guess what? It changes. That's why I like the word. And you and that's why the word of God say, meditate on it day and night. Day and night. Meditate on that word. Not just when you're in trouble. And not just when you don't have nothing to do. And when I mean about nothing to do, take the word and allow it to penetrate your spirit. Allow the revelation to come forth. Just don't take it at face value. And just say, oh, we're supposed to read our word every day. So that I'm going to read it. Mm -mm. Fall in love with the word of God. Just like you have fell in love with God. Fall in love with his word. Your destiny awakes. Allow that person that God is using to help you to your destiny. Shut down your independence. This is not about you. Because some of you have assignments that are far behind. That God is playing catch up with you. Isn't it time to get in position and do what God has called you to do? And change is good. Yes, Lord. Change is good, but change does not feel good. Because we are settled in our place. That's, what's wrong. That's what happened to the Israelites. They didn't want to change. Because they were scared to change. Because they didn't know what was going to happen down the road. And we get like that too. Because we don't know what's going to happen. And so we're just going to reject change. And change can be painful. But if you only allow it to be. And it can be scary because you don't know what to expect in the natural. And some of you are fit to do a transitional change. And what I mean about a transitional change, you are fit to leave one city or state and go to another city or state. God is doing this. I know I'm one of them. I'm just anticipating on where God is getting ready to locate me. I have already accepted it in my spirit. 
I already know that I have to go because God had already told me but I have to adhere and I cannot allow distractions and this is what the Spirit of the Lord said do not allow distractions to cloud you because he is speaking so heavily in this season I believe God is speaking more now than he ever did before he is really speaking but we have to be in the position to hear him because uh, you may not get this chance again if you miss it you may not get this chance again because God is giving instructions God is giving a strategic plan and we cannot miss it we got to do our part God is there waiting to pour out the open heaven blessings but we got to get in line we got to set some time out. We got to hear from God. We got to do what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are so comfortable until we miss God. And then once 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 we miss him, we want to cry and say, "Oh God, I'm sorry." We have a choice to either remain the same or accept the change. I don't know about you. But I told somebody, every time I get into the presence of the Lord, I am expecting something new. I cannot go into a church building and do not expect a newness or something new from God. The norm is no longer in my vocabulary. I'm searching for His presence. I'm searching for His Spirit. I'm searching. I want him to talk to me daily. Not only when, when I come to him, but I want him for to talk to me all the time. That's that what was wrong with the Israelites. They was comfortable living under Pharaoh's rules. And some of us are comfortable living under the bondage of Pharaoh. Living under the bondage of lack, not more than enough. Until we can't or don't know the voice of God for ourselves. We, we are more dependent on the prophets and the prophetesses and the leaders to tell us what they'll say the Lord. Than we getting into our own prayer closet to hear him. Don't get me wrong. They are confirmations. They are confirmators. They just only tell us what God says. My time is well spent. And I pray that what you said, what I've said, excuse me, has been a blessing to you. And until next time, we will finish this topic. And I want everyone to have a blessed week. And God bless you all.